Hi, my name is Scott, and today we're going to be going over how to replace the cord lock on a Bally or Graber standard lift cell shade. You'll know that your cord lock is failing if you raise your shade to a particular height and lock it, and if one side of the shade gradually lowers or if the entire shade continues to lower once it's from the lock position. That can just mean that this mechanism is faulty, and you can actually replace this yourself. We'll show you how to do that today. The advantage of doing this yourself is that the blind does not have to be taken down and shipped back to the manufacturer where they will cover it under warranty, but the blind could be gone for two, two and a half weeks. This is actually a simple repair where they can send you the part to your home and in 15 to 20 minutes you can go ahead and complete this repair yourself and bring your shade back to a fully operational status. So let's go ahead and show you the tools that we're going to need to do that today. It's helpful to have a uh, multi-screwdriver but if not, you don't have one, a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat head screwdriver will be used. In this case, to get into some of the smaller moving parts, I have a very, very small flat head screwdriver. This isn't necessary, but it will be helpful as you'll see later on in the video. And then a pair of needle nose pliers. I don't know which pair is gonna be best for this project, so I actually got a larger pair and a smaller pair. I think they'll both have their places, but if you have two pairs, that'd be great, but if not, a medium pair will work for you. First, to go ahead and get started, we need to go ahead and remove the uh, cord guides and the cord collectors on this blind. So you'll see here, one is shaped like a little ball, and then this is a stop that just clicks onto the string, and this allows the blind to be stopped at a predetermined height. So we'll remove this. As you can see, it has a very, very small clip right here and that's where the small screwdriver comes in handy. You actually push this clip back and this piece will open up. I'll go ahead and do that now. You can see that just opened up. Again, all you do is there's a little tab on this side and you just push that tab towards the center or the body of it and then it will just open up and release the cord. Then for the little ball that we have, we just unscrew that from the bottom and it just unscrews counterclockwise and you can see that releases the thicker primary cord and that's what takes you into your two, three or even four individual cords depending on the size of your blind. Now you can go through the process of untying this knot there's always included extra string on it, so rather than trying to untie that's been tied for a long time, I always find it's a bit easier to just take a pair of pliers or a pair of scissors and the cutters along the back of the pliers, I will actually just cut that right at the end of the knot. And so that allows me to then slide off those pieces and we're gonna hang on to these because we're gonna need them later. And now you can see the cord has no obstructions on it. I'll be able to slide out the cord lock and nothing will get in the way. So now we're ready to prep the shade. Again, there's nothing on the string. The string is completely free and clear at this point. So we know we can slide the mechanism out through the string. So we're gonna look at the top of the blind. And along the top of the blind, you're gonna have one or two small Phillips head screws depending on whether the blind is a top down, bottom up or a standard lift. In this case, it's a standard lift. So we only have one cord lock. And so at the opposite end of the blind, we'll find our Phillips head screw. We will need to go ahead and take that screw out. So here's where the Phillips head screwdriver comes in handy. If it has a magnet, it's beneficial. If not, once you loosen the screw, you can use your pair of pliers to reach in there and get it. Since most people won't have a magnet on either their screwdriver, I'll show you how to just grab it with a pair of pliers. Once it's loose, you can see it here. Now again, everything that we take off of this blind, we're going to reuse. So make sure that we keep track of these. You can put these in a small baggie or put them off to the side where they won't get lost. Some of these pieces are very small. So if you're doing this over carpet, please make sure that you put them someplace where they won't get lost in the carpet. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off the end cap. This plastic end cap here is just a press on end cap. And I will use my small flathead screwdriver, but you could even use a larger screwdriver. And you just put it between the little gap here of the plastic end cap and the aluminum rail. And now you just gently pry it away from the blind. If the blind has been up in the window for a number of years, this plastic can be a little bit brittle. So I do recommend being careful with it and just gently working one side out than the other. And you can see the piece came out. Now I'll repeat the process for the other side. Now we will go ahead and flip our blind over 
so that where the cord comes out, which we call that the head rail, the top, what would ordinarily be the top of the blind, will now be sitting on the bottom of your work surface. And then we're going to slide the fabric the opposite direction of the lock. So again, now that I flipped it upside down, you can see that my cord lock and my string are on the right hand side. So now we're going to go ahead and slide the fabric to the left while holding our bottom rail in place or sliding the bottom rail to the right while holding the fabric in place, whatever you prefer. And just do it slowly as you make sure you don't want to tear the fabric. And if you have any tension, this cord lock actually may be locked. What happens is as you're sliding this blind over, you're taking the string slowly in. So if you're feeling some tension, make sure to jiggle this a bit. Make sure that this cord is free and able to move. So in this case, mine is, I can see the cord slowly pulling in. Now it just got stuck a little bit. So I'm gonna unlock it, pull it to the inside of the blind to unlock it. And then just continue to slide it over. There we go. Now you can see it's open. And this is the piece that we need to replace called the cord lock. So in order to replace the cord lock, you have to first unlock it from the metal rail that it's in. You can see the cord lock here, and the way that it locks in, these two tabs on the side actually squeeze in. So once this was pushed into the blind, those tabs popped back out. So we need to push the tabs in on each side, and then the cord lock will come out from the front of the blind. So sometimes this takes a little bit of work, and this is where I mentioned that a large or small um, pair of pliers can come into play. It's beneficial if the pliers are wide enough to really grasp both sides of these tabs and push them in at the same time, but that does require a bigger pair of pliers, and sometimes it can be difficult to get in here. So what I found is you can go ahead and push in one side and then gently work the other tab in, and from that point, slide it out. It takes a little bit more time, but in this case, that's what we're going to do. For this case, you'll want to get a flathead screwdriver if you have a multi-tool. What I did here is I just flipped the multi-tool out to uh, reveal a small to medium-sized flathead. I also have my micro flathead here that I used to work these out. So I'm going to push in the tab closest to the outside of the blind first. And as I push in on this, I will push up a little bit. And you can see how it's already starting to come out just a little bit right here. Now I'm going to go from the other side and push in that tab and push it forward. And you'll see how I was able to get this one started, then go with another screwdriver from the other side and push in the opposing tab. Now that it has stepped away from the body of the head rail just a little bit, I know that the tabs are no longer locking it in place. From that point, you can either push with your thumb from the back or you can go ahead and get a pair of pliers again and grasp the body firmly and slowly work it back and forth. And here we go it's starting to come out. So now that we have the piece free, if you flip it over and look at the top, you can see how the cord is routed through the body of the mechanism. And that's important because when we come back with our new piece, we're gonna have to route this cord through the mechanics in the exact same way. So it's best to at this point stop, compare your old piece and your new piece, make sure that you have the right cord lock. The pieces should be identical. And also keep in mind that based on the color of your blind and the color of your rail, these pieces, while not an exact match, are color coordinated. So if the vendor may have accidentally sent you a white part, you'd want to make sure that you have the correct color before you put everything back together. So I can see that the cord goes through a little black gate here. It goes around a polished barrel and out the side. And there are left and right hand sides of these. So in this case, also make sure that as you're comparing it to your new piece, that you have the right one. Since blinds, you're able to have controls on either side, there's specific cord locks for each side. So again, make sure that the piece you're going to replace it with is identical to the piece that you're removing. In this case, it is, so we're in good shape. Now what we can go ahead and do is just gently slide the string from the back of the cord lock. We'll go ahead and pull it all the way through to release the cord lock. There we go, we have the old one out.